what follows, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Uh, what I wanted to begin with is uh, a story. And this is a story of a companion by the name of Marthad ibn Abi Marthad al-Ghanawi, radiyallahu anhu. Not very famous, we haven't heard about him, but let's get to know about him. And what we can learn from him as being a true follower of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So my brothers and sisters, Marthad radiyallahu anhu, he lived in Mecca. And he had a girlfriend in Mecca, her name was Anaq. And of course, they weren't married, so they had a relationship that is just like any other relationship in where he would spend nights with her, he would spend time with her, he would drink with her, and so on. A few years go by, and Islam comes. It finally arrives, and he accepts Islam. And uh, the event of the Hijrah takes place to al Madina. So eventually, he had no other choice but to sacrifice his relationship with this girl, Anaq. He sacrificed that relationship for the sake of Allah. And he migrated with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Mecca until he reached al Madina, And all the other Sahaba radiallahu anhum did the migration as well. A few months go by in Medina. It was very difficult. Uh, for Marthad radiallahu anhu to give up what he gave up. I mean, there was intense and strong love between them, which over in this story, you'll find out exactly what that means. So when he's in Medina, the problem is that in Mecca, there are still prisoners of the believers that as they were trying to escape Mecca, they were captured by Quraysh and they were imprisoned and they were tortured and they weren't able to go anywhere. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam arrives to Medina, the first thing he does is that he handpicks, he selects and he chooses some of the Sahaba that were strong, that were tough, that were full of might and power. And he chose them so that he sends them back to Medina, so back to Mecca so they can go into Mecca and free the prisoners of the believers and get them out of trouble. So he and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is choosing some Sahaba and he chooses from among them Marthad al Ghanawi radiallahu anhu. Marthad was a tough man. He was strong. And he had just accepted Islam. He's migrated. And he's, he's selected for this mission to go and free some of his brothers that are still trapped in Mecca. So now he comments and he narrates the story. And he says, I left Medina and I began to approach Mecca. And as we got close to Mecca, he said, فَانْتَهَيْتُ إِلَىٰ حَائِطٍ مِنْ حَوَائِطِ مَكَّةِ فِي لَيْلَةٍ مُقْمِرَةٍ He says, as I reached Mecca, it was, a, it was a night, a full moon's night. So it was a bright night, the moon was out, and he reached at night, and he said, I went until I reached one of the walls of Mecca. And he stuck himself to the wall, because obviously he doesn't want to be found and he doesn't want to be seen, and he began to walk alongside this wall. And he says, as I'm walking, I see Anaq. She saw me. And she said, Marthad, she found me. She recognized him from his shadow. The ulama, rahimahumullah, when they discussed this hadith, they said that's the intense love that was between them. That as a matter, she just saw his shadow and she knew he was. So she said, Marthad, is that you? And he kept quiet. He didn't say anything. Obviously, he doesn't want to put himself into trouble or want to expose himself, so he remained silent. But where is he going to go? She said again, Marthad. And now this time, he gave in and he said, Marthad, yeah, it's me. So then she said to him, Ahlan wa marhaban, halumma bit indana layla. She said, oh, welcome. She's remembering the old days she had with Marthad radiallahu anhu reliving those days and what we used to live in. So she said to him, Halumma bit indana layla. She said, come tonight, come over and let's uh, let, and sleep over my place tonight. So without hesitation, radiallahu anhu, he stood right in front of her and he said, Ya Anaq, inna Allah harram al zina. He said, Anaq, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal has made zina, has made adultery impermissible. It's haram. I'm in a different religion and things are very different here. That is absolutely incorrect for me to pursue with you and go home tonight. So she, uh, being a disbeliever, she's got no idea what this halal and haram is and what this zina is. So yani, she's confused. And she said to him, uh, what do you mean zina? 
يعني it's as though she she felt like she's being accused in her in her dignity and her honor. She felt like she's being slandered. So she said to him, "Listen, if you don't come tonight with me, I'm going to scream out from here that you're the one who's coming into Mecca, picking up the prisoners and freeing them." For he heard that and he began to run, and he said, "Hatta إلى الخندمة." As he is running, he's running towards a mountain in Mecca called Al Khandama. And she screams out, Ya Ahla Mecca, Inna Hadha Rajula Yahmilu Asrakum. She said, Oh people of Mecca, this is the man who comes in and carries your prisoners and he frees them. So he began to run as fast as he can. He gets to the mountain Al Khandama and he hides in a cave that he knows. He was a Meccan boy, so he knows around. He gets into the cave and he hides in there. And he says, I can count almost eight men of the strong men of Mecca. They were on their horses and they're following me. So they get to him and they're following and they're on the mountain and they're searching for him. And they said they spent a while on the mountain and he's hidden in the cave and he's really silent so that obviously they don't catch him out. And he says, until they gave up the search. So everyone got onto their horses about to go down the mountain and just go back to their houses. And he says, except for one of him, and this is a hadith in uh, Tirmidhi, uh, rahimahullah. He says, one of them, he came and he wanted to urinate. So he began to urinate and his urine, bala ala ra'si, he urinated on my head, Allahu anni, and Allah blinded him that he did not see me. So this is, was a karama, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a miracle that happens to mankind other than, yani it happens to human beings other than the prophets. That's what he's saying in the narration. So they went, and what would you think Martha radiallahu anhu is going to do? He did not just pick himself up and go straight back to Medina. He didn't do that. He's there, he's on a mission, he doesn't want to upset Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his brother in Mecca that is waiting for him. So he goes back into Mecca once again, and this time he gets there successfully. He finds the man chained on the floor and he's put like in the middle of Mecca. So he unties him basically and he puts him on his back. Remember, Marthad was a strong man and he walks with him until he reaches a place known as Al Idhkhir, which is just outside Mecca. Once he gets there, he puts the brother down, the Sahabi down, and he cuts off the iron feathers that were feathers that were on his feet and the chains that were in his hand and so on so that the sahabi radiallahu anhu could walk on his own and then they make their way until they reach al Madina. walhamdulillah successful he got his brother released now subhanallah he gets to al Madina, and the next day and they listen to this part really carefully he comes to nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he says ya rasulallah he's going to ask him a question you wouldn't even imagine he's going to ask this question. He says to him, Ya Rasulullah, an ankiha anaq. He says, Ya Rasulullah, please give me permission that I go back to Mecca and get married to my old, my ex, my girlfriend, anaq. Give me permission to go. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the narration, it says, and by the way, she almost killed him. She almost killed him. But this is the intense love that was between them. He says, give me permission to go back and marry her. In the narration, it says, in Abu Dawood, it says, فَأَمْسَكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ In At-Tirmidhi, it says, فَسَكَتَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ Powerful. The narration says, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam remained silent. He did not speak. He was speechless. Al-Ulama, rahimahumullah, they began to explain this speechlessness of Rasulullah Why did he remain silent? Even though the answer is very clear. I mean, the Quran has already revealed way before a few months, Allah Azza wa Jalla said, وَلَا تَنْكِحُوا الْمُشْرِكَاتِ حَتَّى يؤمن. Allah has made that law very clear, that it's not allowed for a believer to get married to a disbeliever. And that's exactly what anaq is. So the answer is, Marthad, no, goodbye. But the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doesn't answer. When ulama, rahimahumullah, they explain that. They say that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was feeling what Martha radiallahu anhu was going through. 
It's not easy. He loved the girl. And so just to dismiss him and just uh, give him a bold answer, look, it's haram, just go. It's, it, he's not going to swallow that really easy. And he's going to remain hurt all his life. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he acknowledges this sensitive situation. And that's something we're supposed to do. There are some people that would come and they would complain about something. For example, uh, is this haram? Can I do this? I've been doing this for the rest of, for all my life. Am I able to continue in it? And we just, brother, it's haram. Salaamu alaikum. Sister, what are you talking about? It's haram. Goodbye. Now, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wasn't like that. He would actually look into the person. It's not an easy situation. Someone has loved a girl for all his life in Mecca and he spent most of the time with her and he's coming to you for direction. How are you going to answer this situation? Very sensitive. For Nabi Sallallahu remained silent. It was so sensitive that Allah Azza wa Jal sends down an ayah from above seven heavens to treat this case of Martha radiallahu anhu. Subhanallah. Allah Azza wa Jal reveals unto Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Az-zani la yankihu illa zaniyatan aw mushrika, wa az-zaniyatu la yankihuha illa zanin aw mushrik, wa hurrima thalika ala al-mu'mineen. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam receives this wahi, he gets up and he faces Marthad, and he says to him, Marthad, Allah has just revealed, Az-zani la yankihu illa zaniyatan aw mushrika, the adulterer shall not marry anyone except an adulteress or a disbeliever. And the adulteress shall not get married to anyone except an adulterer or a disbeliever. And Allah has made this impermissible upon the believers. Don't get married to her, O Marthad. Marthad radiallahu anhu listens to this ayah. And he listens to the advice of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi And he gets up and he's so happy. He's so, yani, he's full of joy and he's full of pleasure and contentment from the inside. You know why? Because Allah declared him from among the mu'mineen. Allah said, وَحُرِّمَ ذَلِكَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Ya Marthad, you're from the mu'mineen. You're from the believers. And you're not supposed to do that. When Allah and your messenger say something, Listen to it and do it straight away. He gets up and it's as though nothing has ever entered his heart of love in his life. These are the true followers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That was their attitude. No matter how much they're attached to something, they would let it go in an instant if they knew that this would displease Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Martha radiallahu anhu understood. If I pursue in this marriage, it'll upset Allah. It will anger Allah. It will earn me Allah's punishment. It's not worth it. So he lets it go and he moves forward in life. Well, subhanallah, my brothers and sisters, look at this. Martha radiallahu anhu, he did not the next day. He didn't go around to the Sahaba and say to them, Ya, ya Sahaba, someone please find me a solution. Ya Rasulullah, I can't live my heart. I need this girl in my life. Ya Rasulullah, I sleep and I see her in my dream. I wake up and I see her in front of me. He could have spent the rest of his life depressed and worried and upset, but he didn't do that. He understood that wouldn't bring him the pleasure of Allah. So he pursued in life. And look at this, look how beautiful this is. Martha radiallahu anhu, after this incident, he lived one and a half years. One and a half years he lived. He could have lived that one and a half years in depression. But because he made the decision to step over his own desire and to step over his own nafs and what he wants for himself for the sake of Allah and in obedience of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and because he did that decision, look what he gained radiallahu anhu. Look what he gained. Number one, he gained a karama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a miracle during his life. And that is that when that person of Mecca urinated on him, and did not see him. Allah gave him a miracle in his life. Number two, Allah Azza wa Jal would bless Martha, Martha radiallahu anhu that he would place him under his shade on the day of judgment. You know the hadith in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that one of the seven types that get to yani, be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment 
is a person in which a woman came to and she called him and he said to her, Inni Allah. That's exactly what Martha radiallahu anhu did. So he gained that kind of reward that he is under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. Further to this, Martha radiallahu anhu pursued in life and he went ahead in his knowledge and he became an expert in the Quran. Imagine he kept recalling that woman. What would have happened to him? Wala Quran, no knowledge, nothing would have happened to him. But because he put it behind his back, he became an expert in his Quran. He became a student of knowledge of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the point where after ye, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sends an army, he sends an army out to Qarra Adul and this battle was called that al Rajir. He was an Amir. He became an Amir after it on a group, on an army that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent to, to fight the disbelievers for a betrayal they did to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is over there where he attained martyrdom and that's how he died as a shadid. Look how much he gained because he understood what it means to be a follower of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, we are happy to announce the launch of the One Islam TV app. Watch hundreds of high quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran learning videos, stories of the prophets, and so much more. Two new videos uploaded daily, insha'Allah. Watch videos on demand, or download videos and watch offline. No more annoying ads or pop-ups. 100% safe browsing for your peace of mind. Watch or listen to lectures and lessons while you work, rest, or drive with your device switched off. One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means the small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqa jariya, continuous charity for you, as we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders. Insha'Allah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. So you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work.